Um, Wei Ma, take it away. Yeah. Oh, I didn't turn that off. Uh, I'm Wei Ma. Uh, my review topic today is uh, collaborative filtering. Uh, with the rapid growth of information today, uh, it's very difficult for us to process all the information coming to us in order to find uh, what information we need. So this problem of information overload uh, has motivated the need uh, for automatic recommendation or automatic filtering uh, of information items uh, such as movies, news, books, uh, based on uh, users' interest, taste, or information needs, and an item's potential to match the taste and to satisfy the need. So in order to uh, tackle this problem, uh, researchers uh, propose a content-based recommendation which relies on uh, item descriptions and user profiles in order to match and uh, recommend. So uh, to recommend or not is actually a uh, uh, binary classification, yes or no. So it can take advantage of a variety of uh, classification algorithms uh, uh, using uh, either structured features or uh, unstructured textual uh, information. However, uh, the content-based rec recommendation has uh, several problems in there. Uh, first of all, it relies heavily on the availability of uh, formal textual content, which is uh, not always available in uh, non-textual items such as music or videos. Uh, also, there uh, is a problem uh, with matching the user profile and the uh, item description because of the different terms used by uh, items and users. And there's also a challenge in order to update the changes over time. It involves users' efforts in order to uh, make the changes. So uh, given these challenges in content-based approach, uh, collaborative filtering came into play. And in 1992, uh, at, uh, uh, researchers at uh, Xerox Park uh, presented the information tapestry project for email uh, filtering and coined the phrase uh, collaborative filter. Uh, collaborative filtering is a process of uh, filtering or evaluating uh, items through the opinions of other people. Uh, it is to observe behaviors of people who share uh, similar taste in order to make recommendations. And the basic idea is that if I have a lot in common with you, then I'm likely to like what you like. Uh, so uh, to my view, it's the use of collective intelligence of decisions in order to uh, do information filtering for personal purposes. Uh, and usually, uh, collaborative filtering is complementary to the content-based method, and they are usually used together in systems. Uh, you, uh, collaborative uh, filtering uh, systems usually assume that uh, there is a matrix or network of uh, users and items and where the rating values uh, connect the users and items. And the task is to predict missing values. And there have been uh, a variety of models proposed by researchers. And the nearest uh, neighbor model is kind of very common. Uh, basically, you can use like Pearson correlation uh, to find similar item, uh, similar users uh, to the person in question, and to make prediction based on the previous history of ratings. Uh, to evaluate most of the research, uh, use uh, accuracy based measures, for example, mean absolute errors. Um, other approach, other research also explored uh, the other measures which should be actually uh, explored further. 
uh, such as uh, coverage, uh, novelty, user satisfaction, and so forth. Collaborative filtering has made some progress uh, in recent years, but there have been also uh, big challenges in this area. Uh, one primary issue is uh, cold start, uh, or which is also related to the sparse matrix. matrix. Uh, the, I, the problem is that uh, given a very large number of uh, users and items, and the number of ratings is relatively small. And with that, that small number of ratings, it's very difficult to make predictions. So uh, research have been trying to uh, solve the problem automatically on the one hand. Uh, for instance, uh, Huang, Chen, and Zhen uh, propose uh, uh, spreading activation algorithm uh, to propagate the signals uh, in the user item matrix in order to enrich the matrix. And they have shown uh, you know, a little bit improvement. But the problem is still there because the system is unable to make meaningful predictions due to a lack of uh, ratings. And research uh, uh, suggests that incentives are needed to encourage ratings to in order to uh, populate the matrix. Uh, another problem is uh, related to bias, which means uh, on the one hand, different people rate differently, and also items have different popularities. For instance, a popular item uh, is favored by so many people that if two people uh, favor this item, it does not tell you anything. So there should be a way to normalize this kind of uh, uh, popularity or bias. Otherwise, <coughs> it introduces too much noise into the, the system and misleads the prediction. So um, there have been research in order to uh, normalize the uh, Pearson, Pearson correlation against like average values, and also there have been research uh, to invert the weightings for commonly favored items. Uh, uh, there's another issue of uh, bias, uh, which is more serious, and it's uh, also related to trust and attacks. Uh, in uh, recommendation systems, uh, there are people who uh, rate inconsistently, and these might be people who are, are malicious people or people who want to mislead uh, the other users to make certain recommendations. So it's important to detect these users in order to make the recommendation, you know, reliable. Uh, the uh, or Donovan and Smith argue that uh, the, the previous uh, approach, assuming that similar profiles make good recommendations, our uh, recommendation partners is not reliable. And they uh, argue that trust has to be uh, emphasized in research. And they propose uh, an algorithm to I use uh, prediction correctness to reweight uh, neighbors, uh, and then use the reweighting schema to to uh, to uh, compute uh, predictions. And I have shown a 22% improvement in terms of error reduction. Um, but there's also a uh, research shown uh, demonstrating that users may adjust to match recommenders' biases, which makes this kind of uh, strategy very difficult to identify those uh, misleading uh, users. So further research is needed in order to uh, take over the problem. Uh, another problem is um, Research by uh, 
these research groups have shown that uh, the distributed uh, results are actually very compatible, comparable to the centralized approach, and while the computational burden is distributed. But there is, uh, but this kind of approach also raise, raises the question of privacy. Uh, on the one hand, uh, researchers argue that because there is no centralized database, uh, this kind of distributed system is more to uh, for tolerant and less vulnerable to attacks and privacy leak. But on the other hand, uh, people argue that distributed architecture may deploy ratings or models to each user, uh, risking exposure of information to every peer. So there are two sides of this problem. Um, the collective intelligence uh, used in collaborative filtering actually goes beyond this uh, specific field. It has a wider application. Uh, social search is, uh, is one application. Uh, in a research done by Smith et al. in 2004, uh, they found that uh, similar queries tend to recur in web search, where searchers look for similar results by using similar queries. And so this kind of idea can be taken into account into search systems, where you can identify uh, authoritative destinations by using the previous search results. And also, uh, another application is social tagging. Uh, the question is, can we aggregate tags generated and rated by individuals collectively? Uh, and Rapti and Hidali uh, call this kind of social tagging as uh, democratic indexing. But can we identify authorities from this kind of uh, democratic indexing? Remains a question. And you can also uh, view uh, PageRank as an application of using uh, collective intelligence because it uses weight, weighted votes collectively in order to rank, pre rank the items uh, globally. So, uh, to sum, uh, collaborative filtering is a process of uh, filtering or evaluating items through the opinions of other people. And lots of challenges remain, such as uh, code starts fair metrics, bias and trust, complexity and scalability, uh, which involves the proposal of distributed approach to collaborative filtering. And the issue of uh, privacy and time and changes over time. Uh, so there are still lots of uh, problems to study in this uh, very specific field. Uh, but the idea of collective intelligence or decision making uh, is broader than the collaborative filtering itself. It involves negotiation and compromise. And is it a democracy where authorities can be voted for and will emerge somehow uh, remains uh, for the research to pursue? And to me, I'm always thinking of uh, collaborative filtering as um, being a global brand emerging from individuals. But interestingly, uh, it is also a global brand thinking locally and individually for you know, individual persons. And so uh, we still have uh, a wider education in it and hope there are uh, you know continual research that can produce even uh, interesting questions. So this is my presentation. Thank you.